Hey, this is Shorya and let me briefly outline this presentation. First, I'll talk about the gate controller, where we go through the mechanism of its working, a small visualization and some important takeaways. In the next section, Ziad will talk about the Autonomous Navigation Planner, its implementation, a short demo and some conclusions. Finally, Arvind will end this presentation with our Hexapod dance, talking about its implementation and some of its key features. Let me begin with a flowchart of our process loop. In each simulation frame, we begin from the measurement of the current state. From there, we update the hex frame, which will be explained in subsequent slides, and finally compute the desired next state. The numerical IK solver solves for each of the 18 joint angles, which are then achieved using a PD controller. The hex frame, as introduced before, is a 2D frame of six circles, and it moves on the ground with the root. The constraint we implement on top of it is that all feet should always be inside their respective circles. We further classify our feet into two triplets as marked with blue and green and whichever triplet violates this constraint will be moved to a new position decided by the feet planner. This essentially is a version of tripod gate. The new foot position is a point on the circumference that's along the direction of the hip motion as indicated by the black arrow here. The movement happens in a specific amount of time and the pattern followed is a linear interpolation from the initial point to the final one. The elevation follows so sinusoid added to the linear interpolation. Here's a quick visualization on how the controller would react to a pure translation and pure rotation. We can combine both to achieve a composite motion. In conclusion, there are several nuances about the implementation that we haven't covered. At each step, we read the current state and plan a gate related to it, forming a closed loop. Consequently, we assume access to the exact state, which can only be achieved in real life using motion tracking systems. We haven't explored the sensitivity of gate controller to some tunable parameters, and we also don't use the dynamics of the system to plan the gate. Hey there, my name is Ziad, and I'll be briefing you over our autonomous navigation algorithm. The algorithm is composed out of three main building blocks, a set point tracker, an obstacle detector, and a path planner. How those work together will be clear by the end of the next three slides. Our first assumption is that the obstacles are cuboidal with random sizes and orientations. This, however, could be easily extended to work for any convex shape. The robot is as well assumed to be equipped with a short-range sensor for detecting the obstacles along its course. So how does the set point tracker work? Given a target point, the necessary heading angle could be easily computed. First, the robot aligns its forward direction along the direction of the target, and then starts moving forward until position error has converged with a certain tolerance. And now to the more exciting part, obstacle detection. Obstacle detection was boiled down to a vertex classification problem, where our line of sight defines the hyperplane. We detect how our line of sight plane separates the vertices. If all vertices lie on one side of the plane, we don't have a collision. Otherwise, we have a collision and we apply a margin lambda to the closest outlier vertex and choose it as our intermediate target point. This is implemented in a receding fashion, that is, after reaching the intermediate target, we rerun the whole algorithm and replan for the next time horizon. Finally, this is how all pieces fit together. We define our target position using the Gubismo coordinate system. Afterwards, we check for collisions along the line of sight. If we have no collisions, we invoke our set point tracker and go straight to the target. Otherwise, we plan an intermediate point and head to that point, and from there, we replan in order to achieve our main target. This concludes the algorithm. Enjoy the video of the implementation in action on the next slide.
Hi, I'm Arvind and I'll quickly walk you through the approach and implementation for the career craft hexapod dance. So these are the goals that we established. Firstly, we want the robot to follow a predetermined song or beats per minute count that could be input by the user. Secondly, the robot should be able to execute multiple movements in a coordinated fashion. And lastly, the robot's movements or dance steps should be able to be chosen by the user and would still stay in sync with the beats per minute. So to achieve this, Chrono Library was utilized to provide a steady clock object, which could then give the time scale needed for beat sync. Time duration per beat was calculated using the formula shown in milliseconds. Using these milliseconds per beat, we could then obtain number of beats and the counts of four beats. The information could then be used to trigger the dance movements accordingly. These dance movements themselves were either piecewise functions or continuous equations, and for the latter, milliseconds elapsed was used as a time parameter. So now without further ado, we will show you a short snippet of our dance choreography. So we hope you enjoyed our little choreography. Now let's move on to conclusion, assumptions and limitations of our approach. So once again, system dynamics are not accounted for, causing the robot to throw, be thrown off balance sporadically. Gate control optimization may not be ideal for dance movements because an objective function for dance should account for precision of timing and smoothness of movement instead. Lastly, open AR could also be investigated to allow audio playback within the program to not only allow better beat sync but also for more information to be obtained than just the beats per minute count. So with that we have come to the end of our presentation. We hope you have enjoyed it and thank you for your